everyone, welcome back to my channel, or if you are new here for the first time, then hello, welcome. In today's video, I am bringing you our bar transformation that we just completed downstairs. I'm so excited to share this with you, and I hope you love it as much as we do. Now, I wanted to give you a little before of what our area downstairs looked like that we are going to transform into our new bar area. So the first thing that we did is we built out a frame for the peninsula that we wanted to create. And then we also built a new cabinet with a bunch of drawers so that we could extend the current bar that we had. My husband built this out of two by fours and we did secure this to the concrete and we did that before we installed any flooring so we could make sure that it was installed correctly and safely. As you can see, there is the cabinet that my husband built, and then this is the other side of the peninsula, which you will see here shortly. We added some shelves and also added another cabinet with a drawer. Next, we're going to take some beadboard that we picked up from Home Depot, and we're going to be putting that onto the peninsula once we have all of the drywall on. We did this because we wanted some kind of accent to the peninsula and we've never used beadboard before and I've really wanted to try it so we decided to go ahead and do it for this project and we really like the way that it turned out. Once we have all of the beadboard applied, we are going to start painting and we are using the color iron ore. You will quickly see that we are creating a pretty moody space down here so we wanted to keep everything pretty dark and moody and we love the way that it came out. finished about two to three coats we did go back through and put a poly on everything to make sure that it was sealed and didn't chip. Once we have finished painting, we are going to move on to pouring our concrete countertops. Now we did team up with the Z Counterform Concrete Countertop Solutions and they did send over all of this, so thank you so much to them for helping out on this portion of the project. The first thing my husband's doing is he's going to be putting the forms down. We did put Dura Rock down first and then that is what we are drilling the forms into. As you can see here, we're putting a form into our sink that we ordered from Amazon and then aligning that with a little bit of silicone to seal that in. This form was a little difficult to get it to stay because it was pretty stiff, so this did take quite a while to get it to where we needed it to. Once we have finished that, we're going to start laying out our mesh and we're going to be securing this to the Dura Rock with their Z clips that they provide. We decided to go with concrete countertops down here because it is a bar area. We wanted it to feel a little industrial and we're so happy with our choice. Once my husband has all of these Z clips installed and the mesh is fully secured to the Dura Rock, we're going to start mixing the concrete. We took their Liquicrete, we're adding that in, and we used a total of six quarts of water. It kind of depends, you can use four to six quarts depending on what the consistency looks like. After two minutes of fully mixing the Liquicrete and two quarts of water, we are going to start pouring in our bags of Quickcrete and then slowly adding in some more water again to get that consistency that we need. Now this was a lot of work. It was definitely worth it, but it was a lot of labor. It was hard to mix everything around and also was a lot of work in getting the buckets lifted up to pour it onto the countertop area. I highly recommend investing in a respirator mask. We ended up going and getting one shortly after this because there was so much dust 
getting blown up into the air, so that really helped us through this project. We also ended up going and getting a corded drill as well because the cordless one just did not have enough power for how intense this mixture was. Once we have everything mixed, we're going to start pouring the countertops and making sure we scrape as much as we can out of the bucket, and then my husband is just going to start smoothing everything out. Once we have filled in any low spots and also evened out the surface as much as we can, we're going to go in with our magnesium float to flatten and smooth the top and allow for water and air to escape. Now we did also go in with a massage gun on the forms to get some of the air bubbles out. Now it's next to impossible to get all of them out, but I did find that this helped a lot. Now we did wait a couple hours to go in with our magnesium float. We didn't do this right away. So you wanna make sure that the concrete has started to dry a little bit. And then we are going to go in with our steel trowel. I will leave the complete how-to video from the company linked in the description box down below. This was our very first time pouring concrete countertops, so we are no experts by any means. So if you do want to tackle this project, definitely check them out and also follow the directions that they have. They have a ton of different videos on their website to help you through this project. As you can see, we've now moved over to our peninsula area and we're going to be following the same steps over here. Once the countertops have dried, we are going to start removing the forms. Now I'm not sure why I didn't get footage of us removing the forms on this side, but you'll see here shortly when we remove the forms from the peninsula. After the forms are removed, we're going to start sanding, which we did quite a bit of this to try to get the countertop as smooth as we could. We're also going to be removing the form we used for our sink and we did also use their knockout form that they have for our faucet which you will see in the very end. I don't think I showed actually removing it but that was pretty simple to remove as well. We waited about a week to seal our countertops. We are using their sealer that they have on their website, which again will be linked down below. Once we have it sealed, we are going to move on to the next portion of this bar project. We wanted shelves all the way up to the ceiling and originally my husband wanted to build them by himself but we quickly realized how expensive and time consuming that would be so we ended up using the Billy bookshelves from Ikea and we ended up cutting the bottoms of them off to fit the space that we needed. Then my husband's going in with some trim pieces and going to be trimming this out to give it a more custom look. Thank you. 
Once the trim is done, we're going to go in and start painting all of the shelves. We did go in with iron ore, the same color we used everywhere else down here. And we're just going to give that about two to three coats and again, sealing this as well. Now for the last part of this DIY bar project, my husband and our neighbor are going in with some tile that we got from Home Depot. This totally made the whole entire space and I couldn't be happier with how it came out. This is the Remedy 2 by 9 inch glaze porcelain tile and I will have it linked in the description box down below. This totally made the space like I said and I had a vision from the start and it came out even better than what I expected. For grout, they are going in with black and we did also get this from Home Depot. I also wanted to show you our faucet that we got. This is from Lulani, which we used these faucets in our bathroom. Not this exact one, obviously, but the same brand. This is the Maldives pull-out kitchen faucet, and we think it just went perfect with our space. We are also adding this really pretty canvas print that we found on Amazon that says our last name and I feel like it also completed this space because this wall definitely needed something. I've been contemplating putting some sconces next to it, but I'm still undecided. I would love to know what you guys think in the comments below. Now I'm just adding the final decor touches because you know that's my favorite part. I will try to link as much as I can for you in the description box down below, but a lot of these items have been discontinued or they are not available anymore. I wanted to hide the light switch cover, so I took these two picture frames to hide it. We got paintable outlet covers for everywhere else in this space, but we couldn't really do much with the light switch cover, so I'm just putting that there and we can move them when we need to. I'm also going to be adding this black tray next to the sink that I got from the dollar spot section in Target a few months ago, and then adding in our favorite amber glass soap dispensers and also the spray bottle. We did get these from Amazon and they've been one of my best sellers. I also wanted to quickly show you the little snack drawers that we created for the kiddos when they are over. Like I said earlier, they love this space so much and it's fun for movie nights. And here is the completed project of our basement bar DIY that we absolutely love. I can't wait to hear what you think of it in the comments below. I will try to link as much as I can down in the description for you. If you do have any additional questions, please make sure to leave those in the comments down below as well. And here in a little bit, I'm going to be sharing with you what the bar looks like with the LED lights on, so make sure to stay tuned for that. I want to thank you guys so much for watching and being here for today's video. I can't wait to chat with you in the comments, and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye! Oh,